All right, so to kick off this video, I am going to begin with a question. Have you ever thought about how exactly it is that you can do all that it is you are capable of doing, such as walking or talking? Well, believe it or not, it all boils down to some key fundamental biological principles and concepts. The amount of detail that can be covered at this level is tremendous, but I will break it down into the basics that are covered at the advanced placement level. As a brief preview of what is to come, there will be two videos. This video is the first part and will discuss 1. Basic Neuroanatomy, 2. A brief overview of neuronal firing, and 3. A big picture look at the nervous and endocrine systems. The second video will take a more profound view into the structure and function of the brain and different methods used to study it, as well as address some basic genetics concepts. Okay, so for the first topic on our agenda, neuroanatomy, the study of the structural organization of the nervous system, we're going to start with one of the most fundamental concepts in this field, the neuron, a single nerve cell. So I'm going to draw a neuron, and while I do so, I will point out and describe the functions of these integral parts. So let's get started. First, we have dendrites, these root-like units that stretch out from the soma or the cell body, and their role is to make what are called synaptic connections with other neurons in order to receive electrochemical signals. We'll get into more detail about this specific form of transmission in just a minute. For now, think of it as a specialized form of, trans of communication. Here, we have the soma or cell body, which I just mentioned. And just like most other cells in our body, it contains a nucleus and organelles. Extending from the soma, we have something called the axon, which is a cable-like structure that transmits the received signals from the soma to the terminal buttons, and it does this in the form of electrical impulses. Covering the axon of some neurons is a fatty substance called myelin, which serves as a type of insulation in order to help speed up the conduction of neural impulse propagation down the length of the axon. As mentioned before, the axon ends in terminal buttons. Other synonymous names include end buttons, terminal branches, and synaptic knobs. Inside of these structures are neurotransmitters or chemicals that convey signals across a synaptic cleft. Located between the terminal buttons of the preceding neuron and the dendrites of the following neuron. The preceding neuron can also be thought of as the presynaptic neuron, and the following neuron can be thought of as the postsynaptic neuron. The electrical signals traveling down the axon are what ultimately lead to the release of the neurotransmitters. Now that we have the parts of a neuron down, Let's get into the specifics about how a neuron can fire and trace the steps that are involved. Initially, a neuron in the resting state will have a negative charge inside the cell and be in a comparatively positively charged environment. Upon electrical simulation, a neuron will release neurotransmitters which then bind to the receptors on the dendrites of the receiving neuron. If the threshold potential is reached, a value that's determined by the net charge inside of the neuron, the cell membrane of the receiving neuron becomes more permeable in a process called depolarization, which allows positive ions to rush in, thus generating a phenomenon called an action potential. When this spreads down the axon from continual depolarizations along the membrane, the ultimate result is the release of neurotransmitters from the terminal buttons, as we just learned. Now, I'm going to draw an action potential out, and I want to stress that neurons fire according to the all or none principle. That is, the neuron will either fire completely or not at all. However, each time it fires, the amplitude or intensity will not change. What does change is the frequency. In addition, there's something called repolarization, where the inside of the neuron becomes less positive following depolarization. Hyperpolarization follows that, and as the name suggests, the potential of the neuron becomes even more negative than that in its resting state. During this time, called the refractory period, it cannot fire again. Eventually, the resting potential will be reached and the process repeats itself. Now let's get into a few of the key chemical messengers that are released. 
their functions, and what diseases they're linked to when levels are abnormal. First off, we have acetylcholine, one of the most crucial neurotransmitters, and it plays a big role in motor movement, attention, and motivation. A lack of acetylcholine has been associated with Alzheimer's disease. Dopamine has a primary role in functions such as motivation, reward, and even movement. A lack of this neurotransmitter is associated with Parkinson's disease, while an excess is associated with schizophrenia. Next, we have endorphins, which serve to mitigate pain, essentially serving as natural painkillers. They're also speculated to have a role in addiction. And the last of the major neurotransmitters is serotonin, which has many different functions in mood control, appetite, and sleep. Decreased levels of serotonin have been linked to depression. All right, that concludes our overview of neurons. Let's go one step higher than that level and talk about the nervous system from a holistic view. To build from the bottom up, let's get into the three types of neurons you'll find in the nervous system. Afferent or sensory neurons, inner neurons, and efferent or motor neurons. Afferent neurons will collect sensory information and transfer it to the CNS or central nervous system, which consists of the brain and spinal cord. Inner neurons located in the CNS receive this information from the afferent neurons and then pass it on to the efferent neurons, which transmit it to the rest of the body, specifically muscles or glands. So it's a little like the game telephone, where the message is passed on to different participants, except here we don't want the message to be changed. In contrast to the CNS, the peripheral nervous system, or PNS, makes up the rest of the nervous system outside of the brain and spinal cord. The PNS is composed of somatic and autonomic divisions, with the somatic controlling voluntary muscle movements and the autonomic controlling, well, automatic responses such as heart rate and digestion. Within the autonomic division, we have two subdivisions, the sympathetic and parasympathetic. The sympathetic subdivision activates the fight or flight responses, such as increased heart rate, dilated pupils, and inhibited digestion. The parasympathetic subdivision activates our rest and digest responses, which are the opposite of the fight or flight responses. Essentially, the sympathetic nervous system arouses while the parasympathetic calms. And the last major topic I want to address in this video is another system, the endocrine system. It's composed of glands that produce all types of hormones, which are chemical messengers that control different processes like growth, metabolism, and reproduction. Now, without wanting to go into too much of the detailed biology here, I'm going to talk about two key structures in the system. The first is the pituitary gland, which is known as the master gland because it activates other glands. It is controlled by the hypothalamus, which we will discuss further in the next video. One of the hormones involved in growth that is secreted by the pituitary gland is growth hormone. As you might have guessed, this hormone is responsible for stimulating growth. The adrenal glands are another important structure, and they release hormones that activate those fight-or-flight responses we discussed earlier. One famous hormone released is the aptly named adrenaline, also known as epinephrine, which increases blood pressure, breathing rate, and overall energy level in preparation of the body for emergency situations. Our last two topics about the brain and genetics will be addressed in the second video, so go check it out.